we want to thank everybody uh, for joining us today. Uh, this is an exciting endeavor. Uh, several years ago, Michael May visited uh, the folks in Nebraska and found, uh, took a look at the, the, the telemedicine that they were doing. And we thought that we might be able to make use of that with our clinics here in North Carolina. Uh, and I want to thank Michael for his efforts in putting this whole thing together. Uh, it's an exciting new opportunity to provide therapy for more children than we might be able to work with otherwise uh, and extend the reach of right care. Uh, I want to thank Laura Moody and uh, the folks at Appalachian for taking the lead on this here in North Carolina. And I want to thank uh, Gail Donaldson. Uh, Dr. Donaldson, thank you so very, very much for your input with this. And again, I want to thank uh, all the folks across the state of North Carolina. I think we've got most of our valleys represented. But it's good to be with you. I thank everybody for being with us. Uh, it's an exciting opportunity, and we're looking forward to the results from it. Often individuals want to come into our clinic and they say, well, we want to see, what does it look like? And I always feel like maybe it's a little bit um, lackluster. You know, it's a fairly simplistic setup. We use a laptop that has a web camera and um, that's pretty much it. So here is a picture of one of our clinicians doing therapy. Um, this is from a couple of years ago. So she's using the laptop there, as you can see. Uh, she felt like using the headphones was especially helpful to be able to hear her clients. Um, we also do this through the, an electronic or a web platform in order to be able to connect. And as you're all experiencing right now, um, this is Zoom, and this is the platform that UNK currently uses. When we first started out, we started with WebEx. Zoom didn't exist at that time, and WebEx served us very well. Uh, we just found a few features and the availability of Zoom to be a little bit more to our liking, and so in 2015, we made that switch and are continuing to use Zoom. There are many other platforms available as well commercially. Uh, the key to it is is that it does need to be HIPAA compliant, so it needs to be secure and encrypted to make sure that the information shared during a session cannot be accessed by unauthorized entities. Um, additional equipment that we've recently added includes a stand for the laptop so that it makes the laptop a little bit higher up so that the web camera is more eye level with the clinician, as well as a cordless keyboard and mouse for easier access. And we recently, just in December, purchased a hover camera, which we plan to use um, so that we can show something that we have physically on the desktop, like on the table. We can have it here in our clinic and we can um, use the camera to show the client through the computer what it is that we have on our table. Specifically, um, we're hoping to use that with our augmentative and alternative communication clients. Those individuals who need to use like a computer device to help them speak will be able to put the device that we have here in our clinic underneath the camera. And then as we push different buttons, the client will be able to see what it is that we're doing with our hands. Um, and they'll be able to also do that on their side with the device that they own in their home. So that is something new that we're adding to our overall setup. So those benefits um, in being able to offer telepractice have really made it so that we can reach individuals who would otherwise not receive treatment. Some of the clients that we see will receive treatment through our Right Care Clinic in addition to another service. They may also get school services or they may also get private speech therapy, but they could still benefit from more. And so that's when they have really sought out the Right Care Clinic. There are some clients, on the other hand, who did not have access to those other services for a variety of reasons. And so they would not receive any service, but we were able to work with them thanks to the this telepractice technology. So it has really allowed us to reach across the state of Nebraska. Um, a really huge benefit for our clients is that it eliminates lengthy travel times. We've heard from multiple families about the time that they have saved, that they're no longer in their car. From the university standpoint, it has been a real benefit in enhancing our student training. 
each graduate student um, for the last two graduating classes has had at least one telepractice experience. Some of them do have more than one opportunity, but each student has at least one telepractice experience. In fact, we've done a survey here within our graduate students back in 2015, um, and it was asking about their satisfaction, their expectations, and their overall feelings about using the telepractice modality. Students said that they were nervous about using telepractice, but they found it to be very beneficial. So um, not only professionally, but beneficial for their clients as well. So we have found it to be a really great experience for our students. Additionally, we've ha heard from um, our students, our alumni, as they are interviewing, that employers are asking about their telepractice experience. And I had a student just this last May say that when she went to talk about her caseload with her future employer, which was an educational service unit in Nebraska, they said, have you done telepractice? And she told them that she had and how much she had liked it. And they were thrilled to know that she'd already uh, had experience with that because they were doing some telepractice and so it was valuable to bring in someone who had done we it We have worked with a wide variety of clients. The youngest being about two years old and the oldest was 88, I believe. And so um, we have worked with all sorts of different um, diagnoses. We've done lots of different types of therapy and um, here we, I've listed AAC, again, that's individuals who use a computerized device to um, talk for them or use that as their voice. We've worked with individuals using AAC who have Down syndrome, autism, other chromosomal syndromes, and many individuals who have low cognitive abilities. So um, their cognitive abilities are lower than We've that also of worked their with individuals who have very limited experience with technology. We worked with a woman who had had a stroke. She was living in a nursing home. Her social worker was her e-helper, and she did not have experience with technology. So that e-helper was key in helping us get onto the computer, getting started. Over the course of therapy, they ended up creating a Facebook page for the client so that she could look at pictures of her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And so it kind of opened up new technology experiences for her that maybe wouldn't have been there had we not started telepractice. That four-year-old population is one of my favorites. They are, I think, so impressive in that they do really well without an e-helper. And a lot of parents have been reluctant thinking, well, I definitely have to have be there because my child's not going to sit and talk to this person on the computer. But they are at a time where they like the independence and they listen really well and do what we need. And we don't mind if they wiggle in their chair and kind of move in and out of the screen, as long as they keep coming back and doing what they need. Uh, we had a little boy who was four and when his mom was sitting right next to him, there was lots of, no, 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 now do this. No, 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 now do this. And he really liked to kind of lay down and then sit up and do a few tasks and then lay down and then do a few more sitting up. And we were fine with that. And so once we kind of talked, with mom she went to the kitchen area and he was in the living room and he did really well and we let him kind of move around and it was really successful for us we achieved a lot with him um, another group that individuals I think parents and families sometimes think this is, might not work is with those two-year-olds because they're really young and um, we have found a lot of success there as well one of the big success um, pieces for working with two-year-olds is parent involvement and helping parents understand some of the goals for an individual speech therapy session. And with telepractice, you definitely need the parents that are working with those two-year-olds, but it has worked really well because the parents really learn a lot about the therapy and they're able to continue to do it in the days that the child is not at therapy. And so again, we've seen a lot of success there, even with those really, really little kids. Um, we've had a lot of fun with it. And for the SLPs who are familiar with the coaching model, a colleague of mine even called it the coaching model on steroids because you're getting to coach that parent on a consistent basis and they really are being put into that role of helping to fulfill the various tasks that you're wanting with eliciting language um, because you're not there physically to do that. So they learn a lot and they are really involved and it has really produced a lot of great results.